Hello, Winnovators and Win Allies. This is Professor Gallagher, and I am thrilled to be teaching a tutorial for absolute beginners on how to build an iOS app. When you're done, you're going to have a fun little Halloween app that acts like the magic eight ball toy and shows predictions. It'll also play sounds, it'll fade in Halloween themed images, and you'll learn just enough so that you can modify this app on your own to provide other random images and phrases and build more apps like an app that'll suggest what to have for dinner, or an app that offers inspiring quotes and images. Now you will need to set up a few things before coming to this tutorial. First, you're going to need a Mac, and it's got to be running Mac OS X Catalina or later. Now you can find out which version by pulling down the Apple menu and selecting About This Mac. If your Mac says version 10.15.4 or greater, you're in good shape. Otherwise, open the Mac App Store and upgrade your operating system. Next, you'll need to install Apple's free Xcode software, which we'll use to build apps, but two things. One, the install needs about 42 gigabytes of free space to uncompress and install, but it'll only need around 11 gigabytes after it's installed. And two, the install can take quite a bit of time. You can run it in the background while you do other stuff, but you'll want to start setting things up at least an hour before the session to make sure that you've got enough time to download and test your software. Now to install the software, open the Mac App Store, search for Xcode, look for the icon that looks like a hammer over an architect's blueprint with an A on it, click that icon, and you can scroll down to check compatibility. Now hopefully this says that Xcode will work on your MacBook. If not, check to see what you need to do to run Xcode. Then when you're ready, scroll back up and click the download icon. Then go about your business. Don't be surprised if it takes about 20 minutes or more to download. And even then, you won't quite be done. Now you also need a free Apple developer account. You've almost certainly already got an Apple ID. This is the same one you've used to approve App Store purchases, work with iCloud, or use Apple Pay. Now you can use this same account as your Apple developer account, but you do have to visit developer.apple.com, so head there now, click on the account button, and then log in with whichever email is associated with your Apple ID and use your Apple ID password. Then to set up the account as a developer account, you might be asked to approve the account with two-factor authentication. Just go through all the steps you're presented with, there's probably also a terms of service or licensing agreement, but that's all you'll need to do. You might see some information about Apple's $99 a year developer subscription. We don't need that either for this tutorial or even for the app's development course. Free is good enough for us. Now, once you've got your account, you can return to the App Store after Xcode is downloaded. You can click the open button and you can quit out of the App Store. But you will see a message that says Xcode needs to install some additional components. Click install. You'll likely need to enter your Mac's password to approve this. You can work on other things while this stuff downloads. It might take another five or ten minutes, but when you're done, let's start Xcode and make sure things are working. Now, the Xcode icon might be in your dock. If not, you can find Xcode in your Mac's application folder. Open that up. Then before we do anything, we're going to set up Xcode to work with our Apple ID. So under the Xcode menu, select Preferences. I'll click on the Accounts tab, then click the plus in the lower left-hand corner, and select Apple ID. Then click the Continue button, enter your Apple ID, select Next, enter your Apple ID password, select Next again. And the first time you do this, you might be asked to approve a few things from a security perspective. Just go ahead and approve anything you're asked to. And now your Apple ID is set up as your developer ID, and you're ready to use Xcode. Now you can close this window by clicking on the red circle. So to test out Xcode, we're going to build a simple app which is empty and has nothing inside of it. So we'll head up to the File menu, we'll select New, then we'll select Project. You can leave iOS and App as your default settings. Click on Next. Let's name this project My First App. Now on this window, next to Interface, find the pull down and select Storyboard, not Switch. UI, it's very important storyboard is selected, then click the next button, select where you want to save this project, I'm going to click on the desktop, and click create. Now this is going to look really complicated, but we can ignore all this complexity. Now just to give you a quick look at what we're going to be doing, if you click on where it says main.storyboard in the left hand side, the first time you do this you'll probably see this progress spinner, and it's going to take a while for this to show up. Again, the first time you do anything in Xcode it's going to take a while, that's why you should set things up in advance. You might see a progress bar across the top that says indexing, eventually that'll stop you'll see an empty image of an iPhone. Then I want you to head up to the window title bar and right next to where it says My First App, it probably says iPod Touch. I want you to click in there, but you want to pull down on that menu and select whichever iPhone you'd like. I have an iPhone 11 Pro, so I'm going to select that, and that's going to be the iPhone that we simulate on our Mac as we run our first app. Then you want to come up here, click on the play button. Again, the very first time you run this, you might be asked to approve some things from a security perspective. Please approve them all. You'll see this progress bar go across up top. Eventually, again, the first time you do this, it'll take a while. Don't be surprised if this first run takes about three minutes or so, but subsequent runs will be much faster, and eventually, you'll see the simulator run. It looks like an iPhone. It's got nothing inside it because we didn't put anything in our app, but you're ready to build your Halloween app. Congratulations. Give yourself a boom shakalaka and get ready to be building apps with the BC Winnovators. For now, it's okay to quit out of Xcode, and you can also even delete the folder that says My First App. We'll create a new app during our workshop. See you soon.